Good morning, folks. Today we've got news on the Greenland Impact Crater, some looks at space weather, the South Pole, and a psychological shift we have been waiting for. We are starting with our star at spaceweathernews.com and find the last 24 hours on the sun. A filament lifts and snaps bottom left, solar tsunami of fire in its place. Bright active regions, but still no flares. We do have a tiny CME to watch for today. It came from the filament snap on the north three days ago and may deliver a weak impact to Earth today. My eyes, however, are firmly set on the sunspots as the biggest southern grouping is a peacock only. There was excellent development ahead of it, but it's turning away from Earth. My attention is on the extended grouping and these two leading spots that catch my attention as it is a double lead, both positive with negative trailers. There will eventually be only one leading positive spot. The question is, will it flare as it morphs to determine who wins? First article today is an interesting one on the Greenland Impact Crater, Hiawatha. Two different teams used two different dating methods and arrived at the same conclusion. It's not a younger Dryas impactor. It is millions of years old. Interestingly, they say the region was a temperate warm forest at the time, which has to make you wonder if Greenland was in the same latitude back then. Folks, on Dr. Phillips spaceweather.com, he's got an excellent bit on geomagnetic heating of the atmosphere, which does not appear in climate models. This is not that different from the equatorward traveling waves excited by the aurora. NASA's Dr. Phillips runs spaceweather.com. Our site is spaceweathernews.com. Quick note on Antarctica as GOSI supplemental polar surveys have revealed a chunk of the Antarctic continent is missing. This changes where they think the continent used to be, but just as importantly, they found much younger rocks than expected, which has implications far beyond the ancient movement of the continents, including when the South Pole was ice-free, like Greenland in the previous story. Last but not least, though, make no mistake, this is a mainstream proclamation out of the shills of propaganda, but even traitors speak the truth. What I noticed was the first major publication calling out public mistrust of academic science and the media. With the media, there's no unbiased reporting. With academia, there's changing stories, no communication of uncertainties, and just getting stuff plain wrong. What he left out was mistrust in government. Folks, I've said it for years on our website podcasts, and it's closer to fruition now than ever. The public trust in critical institutions will fail, and that's when things get fun. We're almost there. We greatly appreciate your support. Website members, your Deeper Look episode yesterday hit on the changing upper layers of Earth with a blast from the past as a cherry on top. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.